And often there's going to be some weekends that you're playing some very, very special teams, just like we have this weekend against the Commodore. So, I, you know, I think that what sets us apart maybe is the league. The competition is so intense from week to week, and uh, you, you take some you take some bumps along the way, but it, it's a league that is very successful. You know, we normally have seven, eight, nine teams get in the postseason. We battle tested. We we battle each other. Baseball is important in our conference to the coaches, players, and, and the athletic directors and the president. So if, if you ask me what really makes our league what it is, I think it's those components. Sonny Gray is probably going to be a top ten pick. Um, what makes him so special and how will you guys attack him? I wish I knew the answer to how you, how you attack him. Not too many people apparently have figured that out. but. He's, um, he's, a, he's an intense competitor. He's very athletic. Um, I, I, I love watching him, certainly not against us, but I love to, I love to see a guy like Sonny Gray on the mound. You know, I, I oftentimes think about the players I see and the players that I coach, and I compare them to other people. He might be another Mike Leak, you know, a kid out of Arizona State that's in the big leagues already. I don't think he spent any time in the minor leagues, as a matter of fact. Sonny Gray is very special. He, he's just got electric stuff. Um, He's like a goalie ball coming back through the middle. He'll catch it if you do hit it, but uh, he ain't can feel bunch. He doesn't have any weaknesses, and he's got he's got plus stuff. I mean, his his breaking ball is change up when he wants to throw it. It makes it very difficult to get to. You look at hits per inning, innings pitched. That's a it's a difficult number. Ray, you've been on such a roll, winning nine straight, fourteen to fifteen. Now this week, dealing with a uh, suspension, shut out by the. Um, Citadel, is there a, a, a sense that momentum has stopped or maybe stalled this week? No, I don't think that's the case at all. If I, uh, if it doesn't work out the way we want it to, it'll be because of the team that we're playing. But, um, you know, we, we played hard the other night, lost at the Citadel, did some things well. Obviously, we didn't push across runs when we had a couple of opportunities. But, uh, you know, baseball is a sport that no matter what happens, you're not going to win them all. And we lost the other night. And Citadel beat us, so we, we move on from that. But uh, certainly the, the Jake Williams situation was a, a distraction, but it's not going to be a reason that we do poorly or anything like that. We're going to go out and be ready to play and do the best we can. Uh, Coach, kind of from, uh, on that note with the Jake Williams situation, I know he contributed to you, you know, this season already. Um, how do you replace him in the lineup of, and what happens coming to the end of well, I'm not exactly sure right right now. Um, you know, we've got plenty of guys. We've used we've used a few guys off the bench, and uh, thank goodness uh, Adam Matthews seems to be close to 100%. Jackie recovered rather quickly from his back situation. Robert Barry's D8 has been in the outfield, been behind the plate. So, well, we got enough guys. We'll um, you know we'll play our older guys, the veteran guys that have been in there majority of the year. Ray, we talked about the bats before the beginning of the season. They might even be less productive than we might than we might have thought. Well, how are you advising your hitters, especially the ones that are used to hitting it out of the ballpark a little bit more often? How are you telling them to change their approach? We talked about it a little bit yesterday after practice and about the national average. I think is down like 25, 25 points from a year ago, the team average. So. Uh, that's kind of where we are, maybe not quite 25 points off the pace, but we're down a little bit. Our home runs um, are okay for us, but I think they're almost 50% down nationally. And we just talked about, you know, what I told him yesterday, you guys are still pretty good players. And it may not be reflected like it has been in the past because of the numbers. But you're still pretty good players, but it is what it is. You have to understand that and feel good about yourself and let's try to be ready to go this weekend. It's all about perspective. What is the status of Morales this weekend? He's, a, I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to play. He, um, he and I talked a little bit after the Tennessee game last Saturday. He's been battling a little bit, trying to stay in there. It, it doesn't, it's his wrist is bothering him. And he, it doesn't bother him all the time. Certain swings get him a little bit. And he said to me after the Tennessee game, maybe I should take a week off. And I said, great. That, that's, you know, players tell you how they feel. And I said, that's fine. You just uh, take the week off and be try to be ready to go for the Vandy game on Friday. And that was the plan. And then uh, about the time we got off the bus at the Citadel, I had my phone with me. I got a text from him. He's in the back of the bus. He texted me that put me in the lineup. We got close to the game, and he changed the way it felt. But I didn't play him. 
And um, he got me in the middle of the game. And he got me in the ninth inning. And I still didn't play him. And he got mad. He got mad with me a little bit. He, he called me out yesterday at practice and let me know he wasn't happy with me. And uh, so I told him that I, I cared about him in the long run, not the short run. And, uh, so we, we worked it out. But he's a competitor. He's going to play. And uh, hopefully he'll, he'll be, be okay. Right, just because Williams is out this weekend? Probably. And uh, just where are you looking at for Stephen Neff and his role this weekend? Um, he should be okay for the bullpen. We're going to start the guys we've been starting, but he should be okay with that limited uh, pitch count at the Citadel. Um, who knows? See, see how it works out. He, he felt good. He actually felt better as the game went on. I think he was a little timid at first, maybe a little cautious. But uh, his velocity got better as, as he went. He hadn't been on the mound in almost a month. Um, and for whatever it's worth, um, Stephen Neff is, is one of our better athletes on this team. And he's been activated as a position player. So he's, uh, he uh, took some swings yesterday, and, and he's very athletic in the outfield with our depth being questioned a little bit. So if you happen to see him run out there, it won't be a complete shock. Ray, just curious. Is this a natural lull with the bats, considering they are the new bats? You've had the injury suspension and things like that. I mean, is it concerning at all to you? I know you mentioned it there off the top. But Can you talk about the offensive production? Yeah, just you know, for the last week or so. Well, we we've had some games. Uh, if you go back, if you go back and look at our season, thirty-two games, and the players and I did this yesterday. If you go back and look, there's probably been seven or eight games where we really kind of swung it pretty good. But that's all. We just haven't been a, a, a great team offensively. And, and I don't mean that, mean that in a way that we're a bad team offensively. We've sort of been like the rest of the country. And in a lot of ways, our average is a little bit better. But we just haven't been a run scoring machine. We just haven't been. That's not the way we've been. We've won a lot of close games. We haven't scored a lot. Our pitching and defense has been good. It's sort of who, who we've been. So you, you, get, you lose. And you get shut out, it gets magnified a little bit. But if you remember Kentucky, not a lot of runs. And then you go to Tennessee, not a lot of runs. And that's it, just, uh, we scored enough to win. And, and you know, I'd like to get a few more, certainly, but that's, that's really who we've been. And we, we, you know, we're striving to throw a few more runs on the board. Is there a sense that, you know, at some point, Jackie's not a, a 285 hitter that it's going to come around for some of these guys. And that's what I sold yesterday. Uh, I said there's probably two guys in this dugout that may be happy with where they are right now numbers-wise. And and those two that I thought would say I'm okay didn't admit it either. So I didn't get a show of any hands when, when I said who's comfortable with where they are. So the good news is our guys feel like we're, we're more capable offensively than we have been. But it wasn't a situation where I was putting pressure on them or telling them, hey, we've underachieved. we got to do better. It might be where we are in college baseball. It might it might be. I mean, if you look at the numbers nationally, at least at this point, that, that's where it is. That being said, our guys feel like we're maybe a little bit more capable than we've been. I don't think we're going to be scoring 10 runs a game, but, but maybe we can do a better job on the offensive side. Ray, uh, you mentioned playing number ones. Um, did you get a sense before Gainesville that you guys, that your players were kind of jacked up for that challenge? And do you have that similar kind of sense with another number one, how they regard the team coming in? Well, I think the good news is with with our cast of characters, with our players, you know, we, 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 don't, we don't fear anyone. We respect everyone, but we don't fear anybody. And, and they have fun with it. And um, that's the good thing about having some older players. It's not going to be you know, David and Goliath. You know, our guys think they should win. And um, are we playing a great team at number one? Absolutely, and, and deservingly so. Uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean you have to feel like it's an upset if you win a game. So our guys, our guys that, that's good. That's a good thing for me as a coach that you don't have to convince your players that we can do this. You know, we might be able to beat them. I know they're great. We might be able to. They're not interested in that kind of talk, and, and, and that's, that's good for me that we have some older guys that have been there. You, you said probably a minute ago to dip about um, Jake. Um, I mean, does that mean at some point before during the weekend that suspension could be lifted? 
Well, if it's if it gets lifted, it will be lifted before tomorrow's game because you have to designate a roster prior to the, the umpires meeting on Friday, and um, it's he, he's unlikely, uh, but there's a couple of variables that could possibly make it possible for him to play. Is that your your call? Not necessarily. <laughs> Higher than you, than you. <laughs> Jay. Everybody's higher than me. I'm five foot nothing. <laughs> All right. Over the last uh, 11, 12 years or so, your teams have not lost more than nine games at home. What makes playing here so special? I mean, is there some magic? Are the fans really that? Do they help that much? I, I didn't know that statistic, but that's a good one I'll try to use in the future. Uh, we have, you know, we have a special environment. We always have had. Even you know, go back to Sarge Fry Field, and then we come over here with a few more people at Carolina Stadium. The passion and enthusiasm of our fans make a huge difference. Um, our players really enjoy the friendly confines, and I think that's a combination of having some good players that enable you to defend your turf. And uh, let's let's hope that will continue. Thanks. Sir. Coach, uh, you mentioned this real quick uh, about the Robert Berry and how he's able to fill and play two or three, four different positions for you. How valuable a tool is that with the limited roster nowadays? Extremely valuable. We talked about it a little bit yesterday as a staff and talked about our future recruiting. Uh, that if you can get a, a multi-positional player, you almost have to do it now with the numbers and limitations uh, that you can have a guy move around. I guess Robert's played First, third, left, and right, and behind the plate. He's been in five positions, and and not many people can can do that. So, extremely valuable. And, uh, you can't have enough of those guys. Anything else? All right. Thank you.